Ah, this is Boom Boom Radigan, and this is Live Water. And tonight, tonight we do NIPERG. NIPERG, it could well be a, an acronym for action or excitement, or some might insist it might be an acronym for controversy. Um, Nightbird, Nightprig. Nightborg, I've seen it all. I've seen Nightprig, I've seen Nightpig, I've seen night Nightbird. Um, I think people say Night... Uh, Wait, how do you pronounce it? And why? What do I say again? What is Nightbird? Um, no, NYPIRD, um, the New York Cubic Interest Research Group. I saw an acronym, NYPIRG, NYPIRG, NYPIRG. My name's Andrew Hatcher, and I have a few questions I'd like to ask you. You can reach me at the NYPIRG office at 212-555-0101. Thank you. NYPIRG? We found two unbelievably dynamic students at Queens College, and we met them in the cafeteria. And it was in a cafeteria in Queens College at about 11 a.m. that Nyperg was hatched. I am in awe of the founding students because it's hard enough to keep an organization going in its 30th year. I can't imagine what it was like to actually start this thing because you need to have the vision of what it's going to look like. You have to have the courage to be able to make it happen where there's no blueprint. 73 was already the post-Vietnam, Watergate, uh, economic recession, Nixon just kicked our butt blues in the election. And so apathy was rising and activism was in free fall. Now I probably had an inside track since I had known all of them from the organizing days and had written the book and allegedly knew what I was doing, but believe me, uh, there was a, a pit of terror in my uh, stomach as to how, are we going to actually be able to do something in this big state. Of course, if you tell people from Queens College that something is difficult to organize, you can imagine the response. The first year was really a gamble. Uh, everything was predicated, the entire budget, everyone knew was predicated upon Queens College becoming a dues-paying member of NYPIRG. Almost every campus had a debate about NYPIRG. It was incredibly exciting. So it's hard to single out one campus. There, were, there, were, there was popping up just about everywhere. New Paltz, Buffalo, Brooklyn, City College. Naturally, it seemed like it was going to be uh, relatively easy. And you read Action for a Change, made sense, it was going to be easy. At SUNY Albany, it was uh, one 4,000 uh, signature petition drive, one referendum, one lawsuit against the state university, sit-ins, uh, throwing the student government president uh, out and putting a new one in, and two years later we had a chapter, a uh, piece of cake. What PERG provided was a vehicle for students to be activist citizens. It's students working side by side with professionals to gain expertise out, outside the classroom while working for social change. Young people actually get to do real work, important work, and get to learn from it and get the credit for it. 20 years later, there have been moments in my career where I've had to drum up that energy and that boldness and that courage. And I think that, that the, having done that through NYPIRG makes it easier. You just almost feel like, I could do this. In the early days of, of NYPIRG as an organization, the big projects were the legislative profiles and the um, the Lulu lawsuit, you know, both of which endeared Nyperg very quickly to the legislature, haha. -ha. So in a small period of time, we had profiled the entire legislature, much to their chagrin. We had sued them over their pay, and we had really um, uh, distinguished ourselves. My name is My name is My name is The canvas has undoubtedly opened a lot of people's eyes and made them think. That, you know, if it's opened the eyes of 1 20th of the people it's come in contact with, that's a lot of people. It was able to fund the movement. It was able to bring in hundreds or thousands of new activists into NYPIRC. That probably is the, is the lasting legacy of the canvas. How many wonderful committed people uh, would, uh, came into NYPIRC and ultimately came into a life of activism and otherwise they never would have had they not seen that ad, that little classified ad in their local paper. Nyperg's canvas will always be the best uh, in the country because we find, because we work on issues of concern on the state level and the local level that people care about 
uh, we, we're the best because people know NYPIRC and they trust us when we come to the door. And we're the best because we find 25 to 30 people of uncommon judgment and courage and vision and passion every year who, who at very young ages, who can represent NYPIRC and do it proud. NYPIRC mastered the art of mass mobilization techniques that build huge rallies. First major uh, national outdoor anti-nuclear gathering was May 6th, 1979, uh, on the steps of the Capitol building. It had come right in the aftermath of the Three Mile uh, Island disaster. And I just remember the morning, early, early that day, looking out on the stage before the crowds began walking in, and the sun just rose. And it was this beautiful vision of the Capitol in our, in the, behind us, the, the dome of the Capitol with the sun rising. And the sun sort of symbolized a new era of solar power and the energy of the people coming forward. We knew we could win. We knew we could begin to shut down nuclear power. And then shortly after that, in September, another rally was held in New York City, Battery Park, which drew uh, 200,000, 100,000 more than the number of people that came out for the Washington rally. And again, it was a, a PERG effort. The one thing we did convey was that we were not crazies, we were not radicals in, the, in any conventional sense. We were people who really cared and weren't going to go away. And there were no nuclear power plants built, uh, new ones built post uh, Three Mile Island. And I think it wasn't just because of the accident and the inherent threat, it was also because they knew that anywhere they went to try to start a new nuclear plant, they would have just an enormous citizen confrontation. But when we were passing the bottle bill, we had a statewide walk starting in Buffalo and Long Island and ending in Albany doing a big rally on the steps of the Capitol. Along the way, we had snowstorms and rainstorms, but a lot of beautiful weather, and it was, uh, it was, it got phenomenal press. And on the other side was 120 separate groups in a coalition that was set up to oppose the bottle bill. And we had a some not-for-profits, and, uh, and Judy Fang. I mean, Judy was uh, unstoppable. Her running headlong into these 120 groups, and by the end of the day, the 120 groups who ended up sleeping with the fishes, and there was Judy, standing tall with the bill, uh, with the bill sign. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? I'm here to tell you that a lot of things have changed. Toxic victims access to justice, um, where, we, where we got it very, very close um, one year and the legislature said that you know, they would get it through as long as we would forget the past victims. These were people we had been working with uh, for years. These are DES daughters and others and we decided we weren't about to leave them behind. My name is Frank Johnson. I'm a ex bell night worker from Syracuse, New York, and I have heart mouth disease. My name is Debbie Leosi Meisenberg. I am a DES cancer daughter. I'm not going to ever have a child. My husband died a year ago of mesothelioma. Nobody told him that he was putting his life on the line. They can poison with them. They can maim, mangle, and mutilate our people here, and then when they get caught, they just leave the state. And nobody does nothing about it. I want to just go to court. I want the head of these drug companies to say to me, I'm so sorry we did this. These lawsuits are the one guarantee that consumers have that their voice will be heard in a court. And it's the one deterrent that's given to corporations in America to say, look, think twice before you put out an unsafe product or before you subject workers to hazardous conditions. It took us six years to really take on in that particular instance, every single corporate opponent, I think, that existed in New York. There were people I worked with who died of their injuries before they were able to bring their, their case in. The law Governor Cuomo signed today allows victims of five toxic substances, among them asbestos and DES, a one-year period in which they can still sue. Those moments stick in my mind, as do the wonderful ones of being able to call up the DES cancer daughters and say, you are going to get into court and you are going to be able to personally face the manufacturers who robbed you of very important parts of your life.
Walter Hang is staff scientist for the New York Public Interest Research Group. I couldn't believe that any Nyberg person could make it on 60 Minutes, and he was just unbelievably effective. Mr. Hang, you're calling the roll on some of the biggest chemical names in America. Hooker Chemical, Olin, Carborundum, Union Carbide, DuPont. The toxic chemicals that these industries are known to be discharging are among the most toxic chemicals known to science. I have been a Subway fan and a fan of Nyperg Strap Hangers campaign for many, many years. The campaign has been at the heart of winning real improvements for riders, from those new Subway cars to those wonderful unlimited ride metro cards that speed you around town. Well, you know, the, the campaign was uh, the idea of a former Nyperg executive director, Marilyn Andrasik, and she was looking around for a new challenge in the late 70s, and the single worst service in New York City uh, it was transit. And 25 years ago, the top reason for businesses moving out of New York were a poor public transportation. What is it going to take to bring the rest of the lines up to par? Well, Gene Rushinoff says money and mm. lots of it. Can't be soon enough either. Uh, we use Nyperk strength. We organized in the city and we lobbied in Albany and we, we won $30 billion, $30 billion over 25 years to fix the system after decades before of inadequate investment. We're the only group in the city that organizes riders. We go out to subway stations, to buses, we hand out flyers, we talk to riders, and we try and be their voice, but we also try and get them information uh, so that they can speak up and call governors and mayors. And One thing that NYPIRG does great is public education. It's really a mission of the organization is to get the word out so that regular New Yorkers can have an impact on things that affect their lives. Register to vote, register to vote, register to vote, register to vote. We did this major voter registration drive on October 4th, right after I got there. And then we entitled it Millions More October 4, and we hit the streets. We hit every busy intersection throughout the city, and we hit the subways as well. And we just went from car to car with our clipboards. We, we had tables, um, you know, in Harlem, we had them in uh, Bed Stuyvesant, we had them everywhere, all over the, the city, trying to enlist uh, particularly voters who previously had not been reached out to enough. And uh, it was exciting, you know, people with blue t shirts everywhere. Uh, registered 50,000 people in one day, all over New York. And people were excited about it, people were ignited. They wanted to get involved, they wanted to get uh, ready to vote in 1984. And we registered tens of thousands of people that year. I'm very proud of that effort. Shops, Air pollution, solid waste, ticket scalping, pesticides, grid lighting, PCBs. Killing every incinerator in New York City. The generic drug law. Truth in testing, a small plane scroll reform, and super fun auto emission standards. The best campaign finance reform legislation in the nation. It's the freedom of information. Fuel buyers group. For the community mapping assistance project. And the list goes on. You know, a knife per year is like a dog year, and it feels like eight. Well, we did canine reform. <laughs> <laughs> well, pretty much wherever there was a major injustice, in consumer, environmental work, government reform, NYPIRG was there. There are environmental groups that look at specifically at environmental issues. There are senior groups that look at senior issues and senior consumer issues. But there's no one that really works uh, on the wide range of issues that exist, uh, from health care to the environment to government reform to higher education. There's no one other group that does that. Having a whole set of campus chapters, having a canvas, having a, a very sophisticated legislative presence. Holding special interest groups and government's feet, collective feet to the fire, uh, is probably the one thing that we do best and the thing that has the biggest impact on the lives of uh, New Yorkers. Long Island or New York City or Albany or the Hudson Valley or the Southern Tier or Syracuse or Oswego or Rochester or Buffalo, you name it, Nyberg is there. Now, what's been your favorite media experience? Probably the Toy Safety News Conference we did in 1997 um, because that was the first really huge media news conference that I ever had. There were something like 12 cameras there. Now, Nyberg is notable for, you know, no fat. Uh, what's your favorite way of cutting corners? Saying no. 
No. Please? No. No. Do you like to watch Mommy on TV? Yes! The most impressive thing about Nyberg over the years has been the integrity and the dedication of the students and staff. I stayed for the uh, low pay and long hours. I, I love the people I have worked with. I love the people I'm working with now. Please. I really like them. <laughs> I really like them. The people. It's always, um, from the very beginning, that's what sort of kept me going. Clearly, they are drivers, they are achievers. And I think that's probably one of the things that binds the generations of NYPIRG staff and students together. Just the tenacity to say that this has to be done, it's going to be done. We know it may take some time, but uh, we'll eventually prevail. NYPIRG is a magnet for talented people, and the people who have passed through this organization are phenomenal. Phenoms. There are people there who work full time and are, have been there for many, many years and have, have made NYPIRG their career, but also the fact that it continues to be infused by new students, new youth, new energy, new ideas. And so that, that blend, I think, keeps that culture as unique as it is. NYPIRG, 30 years. Happy birthday, NYPIRG. So what do I say? Happy uh, 30th anniversary to NYPIRG. Happy anniversary, NYPIRG. Uh, NYPIRG, happy 30th anniversary. Happy 50th anniversary. Happy 1,000th anniversary. Happy 30th anniversary, NYPIRG. Wish you all the best and 30 more. May there be many, many more legislative victories in your future. Happy 30 years, NYPIRG. And may, most importantly, there be many, many, many more uh, wonderful party nights for everyone involved in the organization. NYPIRG forever. Happy anniversary, Nyperg.